Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to Zeta Halo in Halo Infinite. Today, we're going to be taking a slow, relaxing wander through the beautiful environments of Zeta Halo. It's nighttime in this part of the Halo right now. So we can look up, we can see the stars and the Halo itself stretching up into the distant sky above us. The clouds are wispy, slowly moving oh, across the sky. Did you see that shooting star there? Gorgeous. I never really expected to be making a relaxing video with a Halo game, and yet here we are, because Halo Infinite is really quite pretty. The aesthetic of Halo has always been somewhat pleasing. I don't know, there's a certain pleasing simplicity to it, and the color schemes are are kind of soothing in a weird way. I don't know, I think, when I think Halo, I think lots of greens and blues and metallics and sort of uh, large geometric surfaces and structures. I don't know how else to describe it, but uh, it does have kind of an appealing set of hues to it, and uh, that's on full display here. Uh, Halo Infinite is, of course, an open-world game. Uh, you can explore large swaths of Zeta Halo uh, at your leisure, kind of going wherever you like, uh, freeing bases from the banished, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to take a relaxing wander through some of the natural areas here, mostly, today. Uh, so let's get going. The soundscape is quite lovely at nighttime here. We've got crickets. Kinds of alien birds, perhaps, making noise. Creaking, creaking coniferous trees here. These trees are very reminiscent, really this whole environment is very reminiscent of the Pacific Northwest, which is where I live. Uh, we've got these these evergreen trees, lots of grasses. We've got some lovely flowers. What look like some mushrooms up ahead. This clover-like plant that's the ground cover here is called Oxalis. Oxalis. In real life. I don't know what it's called in Halo. <laughs> I don't know. It probably doesn't have a name in the Halo lore. But it's modeled after a real plant. We've got some kind of ground cover here in the dappled moon shadows. Lots of ferns. They look like sword ferns. That's a real plant. It's more of these small maple-y looking things. And some pretty yellow flowers. I don't know what kind of flowers they are. Buttercups, maybe? 
They look kind of like buttercups. And then these other lighter colored ones. The level of detail in Halo Infinite is obviously far beyond what we've seen in any Halo game before. They've really gone all out with these environments. And the result is just beautiful. It rivals my modded Skyrim, <laughs> and that's saying something. I just love what they've done with the undergrowth, the ground covers, all the foliage. And the sound design. Oh, the light just shifted there. I wonder if dawn is coming. Kind of had a silvery light previously, but now it feels like it's warming up a bit. Oh, and you can hear the birds starting the dawn chorus. Listen. The light of dawn just catching the, oh, look at that, illuminating the valley there as the sun slips past the other side of the halo. Beautiful. Something really special, actually. This is the first dawn I've actually seen in the game, but all of those columns, those hexagonal columns down there. They are obviously mechanical or synthetic parts of the halo, sort of the superstructure of the halo, but they look an awful lot like uh, basalt columns in the real world. It's a natural geological structure that can form and it's beautiful. Definitely dawn. Sky is starting to be illuminated. The clouds lighting up with the golden light of dawn. Let's see how it looks from the other side of this little valley. This little cleft between these peaks. I should point out that there will not really be any story spoiler in this video, if that's something you're concerned about, beyond the fact that we are on Zeta Halo, and there are bad guys called Banished. I think that's about, that's about it. I suppose you might see some structures on the halo, but I'll really try to avoid any specific story spoilers. Like there, for example, is a structure, <laughs> but I won't say anything more about it. Although I suppose if you are really worried about spoilers, you wouldn't be here. You would have already left, or never come in the first place. Look, there's a collection of butterflies over here. Or some kind of halo equivalent of butterflies. <laughs> Very pretty though, dancing around. You might occasionally hear some explosions in the distance. Don't worry about it. It's not something we have to worry about. We're not on our relaxing wander. But, of course, there is conflict on Zeta Halo. Wouldn't be much of a Halo game if there wasn't. 
And you've probably noticed that I am carrying a plasma pistol. <laughs> uh, in previous Halo games, I believe there's been a way to lower your weapon for machinima purposes. I have not figured out how to do that in Halo Infinite just yet. It seems like there, there probably is a way, but I haven't been able to find one that works. So if you are listening and watching and you happen to know how to holster your weapon or hide the view model, please do let me know in the comments. I'd love to be able to do that. I also love the way the sun is illuminating this valley. The dawn sunlight just creating this beautiful dynamic light spilling across this valley. Do a little jump there. And I think we'll have to do a little jump over this log too. little walk through these big old trees. Trees which I'm fairly certain are modeled after western hemlock. Western hemlock. Maybe a slightly artistic take on western hemlock. Go up here. I bet you there's a nice view from up here. The way the light just kind of spills into the valley here. Oh, like you can actually see the shadow creeping across the rock face over there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The way the light spills in is, is so dramatic. It, makes me think of the paintings of Albert Bierstadt. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he painted a lot of gorgeous, very dynamic, dramatically lit paintings of the American West. One of my favorite painters. Not that I'm a connoisseur of, of painting or art or anything, but I do like his stuff. It's really gorgeous. You should look it up if you've never seen it. Love the way the halo just arches up into the sky. And the fact that the time of day is dynamic in Halo Infinite here, and the halo itself interacts with the sun, you know, the light source from the sun, makes it feel so much more present and real than just a static skybox, you know? Look at that volumetric light down there between those trees. Hmm. You can hear the wind whistling. Shall we head down, perhaps? Get a closer look at that pretty valley down there. I just have to try and find our way down. It's not going to be too jarring for you guys. This route might not be too bad, but this one to the left of us here might be the most relaxed. Let's do that. I think that's probably going to be the best. Look at these roots sticking out right here. area that we're in right now is very close to the beginning of the game. Or at least the beginning once you get dropped onto the halo here. The very start of the game kind of takes place elsewhere, but I will not say where. Because again, no spoilers. Isn't that a view? Look at that. But 
dynamic sounds of the environment are really pleasant. There's some very loud birds here. <laughs> well, not very loud, but talkative. Talkative birds, let's say. I think we can drop down here. This may be a little bit more of a drop than I want to take with you guys. I'm trying to keep it relaxed. <laughs> Maybe we can jump across here. Let's do that. And then drop down onto this boulder. There we are. Not too bad. Oh, look. Beautiful colors in the sky. The Halo games have always had strong skybox artwork, but it's just on another level here. The dynamic lighting. Very pretty. I should also point out that, uh, not that this matters too much, but in case you're wondering, I'm not much of a Halo veteran. <laughs> I've played very little of the games prior to this one, actually, so I do apologize in advance if I get some of my descriptions or my lore wrong. I do not claim any Halo expertise. I mostly just played multiplayer on the old Halo games, like 1, 2, and 3 and a little bit of co-op campaigns in past, but uh, it was a long time ago. This is actually the first Halo game that I personally have ever bought and played. Um, again, no spoilers, but I will say what I've played so far, I am enjoying greatly. And even though I haven't played that much of Halo, uh, especially the campaigns, the sort of story content in past, I do have kind of an understanding of the aesthetics of Halo. It's kind of hard not to. Oh, look at this little creature. A little armadillo-like creature. I think we scared it. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah, I have an understanding of the aesthetics of Halo, and I, I, I really feel like this game just nails it. Really, looks and feels like I think Halo should look and feel like. Quite a lot of detail in the just the rocks, the sort of talus of broken rocks down this slope. That's cute, the little creature. Did you see it just stood up? Looked around. Maybe it's more like a marmot. Look at it. Oh, that's adorable. Definitely get marmot vibes. Sort of Pacific Northwest nature of this. This area helps in that interpretation. Sort of feels like a subalpine Pacific Northwest environment. You can hear that wind in the trees. More of the mushrooms and the buttercups. dynamic shadow here being cast by the communication dish up there. More of those little insects fluttering about. <laughs> Does 
Doesn't this give you alpine meadow vibes or subalpine meadow vibes? Definitely does me. And it's just so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The way the light illuminates the blades of grass and leaves. And also they're shadowing themselves and one another. And then also the specular highlights on the leaves. From the sunlight. Very, very pretty. I knew that Halo would make for a nice, relaxing walking simulator. I certainly wouldn't have guessed it before this game, anyway. a base of sorts down there. And the volumetric lighting is just a subtle, a subtle mist in the air really gives layers to the landscape, you know? I like that a lot. that we descended from. Looks quite far up from here, but didn't feel that far up <laughs> when we descended. Didn't feel that far up. Beautiful field of wildflowers here. That was a different sound. I didn't recognize that creature. <laughs> it made a noise out in the distance there. You can almost smell the mountain air. Except I don't know what air smells like on a halo. <laughs> With all this stuff living here, it probably smells pretty good. You know, the oxygen would be generated by all the vegetation, all the foliage. There's another strange sound I hadn't heard before. Off to the left there. All kinds of creatures squawking and going about their lives. wood, creaky trees sound a lot. It's nice. Lots of these little mushrooms about, huh? Wonder if they're edible. Once in a while, you just get an explosion sound in the distance or something. But it's pretty reserved. Not too many. Lots of these vessels floating around in the sky over there. Not actually quite sure what they're about yet. Probably bad guys, but I'm not sure. Head along this kind of ridge here. I think. 
think I'm going to need to go and read up on Halo story and lore because I'd like to I'd like to get the most out of this game. And given that I am enjoying it quite a bit, I'd like to understand the context of everything as best I can. I think Halo has a lot of story and a lot of lore. And as I said, I'm pretty ignorant about most of it. So look at these ferns base of this tree. I love the way the light reflects off the leaves. It really gives them a sense of physicality, grounds them in the world. story, clovery looking stuff, oxalis looking stuff, it's even animated, moves with the wind, very pretty. It's a very natural feeling of lighting that they've got, which I love, makes it feel like you know, believably lit. It's not over dramatic, but it is dramatic when it wants to be, like dawn and dusk. I've got a little bird. I think I must have scared it. Sorry, bird. Wonder what type of bird that could be. I also really like the cloud shadows, and I like them, so I'm glad they, glad they do them. But if you look out over the landscape, you can see cloud shadows just gently drifting across the hills and cliffs. It's another one of my favorite kind of effects in modern open world games, because I really helps with that sense of depth in the landscape and makes it that much more dramatic. Genshin Impact does it and it looks really nice there. And you can actually get cloud shadows in Skyrim with an ENB, a graphical modification that adds a whole bunch of beautiful shader based effects. It's a bunch of different presets for ENBs in Skyrim, but some of them do come with cloud shadows enabled. I know this is not Skyrim, but it's hard not to compare it to Skyrim because it really does look an awful lot like a modded Skyrim. I mean, except for the presence of all the ships and rockers and such. You know what I mean. I think you know what I mean. Let's see, I think we can get up to a nice viewpoint up here. Let's, let's head this way. See if we can get a nice view. actually makes sense in this game, unlike many others, because Master Chief's visor would potentially be susceptible to lens flare. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like lens flare, they complain it's unrealistic because your eyes don't have lens flare, but it makes sense if you have a visor. 
to this tree here. It's been broken, shattered. Beautiful lighting. Okay, let's see. I think maybe we want to get up here. Maybe if we head over here, we can jump. Let's try. Let's just try and sneak through here. And jump. There we go. And jump. Huh. Here we are. Ah, oh, flocks birds in the distance there. We do indeed have a lovely view from out here, don't we? Those birds are quite majestic. wonder if they're the same type of the one that we frightened earlier. <laughs> Coming back around. to say. Down there, that's that base we saw from up above earlier. The epic sweep of the halo up above. I also love that you can still make out some of the stars, even at daytime. I think it's a really lovely artistic flourish. More of those cloud shadows and the way the sun reflects off those, those artificial pieces, the skeleton of the halo. Maybe there's a term for those, I don't know, but and it helps add a, a visually interesting element to a landscape that's otherwise quite organic. Sort of starkly artificial element, but no less beautiful for it. Really provides a unique aesthetic, part of the aesthetic identity of the series. Oh, look at those birds, they came quite close this time. There they are. Just flying around. Well, my friends, I think this will be a great place to end our wander today. Not the longest wander ever, but a very pleasant one we got to see. It's on the night time, the glorious dawn, and it's a beautiful daytime on Zeta Halo. I do hope you found this relaxing. Thank you, by the way, to those who participated in the poll that I put out to see if you wanted some Halo ASMR, and it was voted that yes, you did. So, we're here because of your votes. Thank you all. Um, and please do let me know if you would like to see more Halo Infinite ASMR uh, with the big open world like this. There's a lot to see, a lot of ground to cover, so there's certainly more wandering to be done if you would like. So please feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the game. Let me know if you'd like to see more relaxing wandering in Halo Infinite. Thank you all again for joining me for this wander today. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now.
my friend.